You have the right to remain silent. 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 The Supreme Court says that you have to say, Mother, may I? The Supreme Court says that you should. Public funding. This is evidence of a contract. As you represent the public, trust in your fiduciary. If you damage my rights, I will hold you personally liable. The administrative agency claim to represent holy law. You have no jurisdiction over my unalienable rights. You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. gentlemen did you know that you had the right to remain silent no no seriously did you know that you had that right did you know that that right doesn't come from the fifth amendment or the constitution did you know that the constitution protects your unalienable rights and alienable or unalienable rights which means they can't be put a lien on those are your rights by nature so why do you keep letting people tell you you have the right to remain silent they don't get to give you a right. Ah, you accepted that right when you signed the contract. <laughs> That's right. But hold on, let me tell you this case right here, 1983. Hold on now. Florida v. Royer, 460 U.S. 491, 1983. In several cases, the Supreme Court stated that you can't just remain silent, but you have to invoke the right. This is a presumption, not a law. The presumption is, that we didn't have the right in the first place, and that you needed to rely on the contract or constitution or treaty or some document in order to establish an unalienable right. Remember, the constitution doesn't grant a single right, you have that right as a result of nature, as a result of being, not as a result of an agreement. The Bill of Rights, is the Bill of Rights, not the Bill of Suggestions, or the Bill of Interpretations, or the Bill of Invocations. So, no, challenge the stupid presumption, that no one, absolutely no person in the United States may be held to answer. So no you don't have to answer their questions, and by not answering their questions they do not have the right to violate your rights. Second, law enforcement officers do not violate the Fourth Amendment by merely approaching an individual on the street or in another public place, by asking him if he is willing to answer some questions. You simply say, I'm not willing to contract. No, I do not wish to contract with you. No, I do not accept your offer. That's what you have to say. You don't just say, no, I am not willing to contract. I do not accept your offer. There's one other thing you must say, and I do not wish to participate in your investigation. Let's see if the Supreme Court agrees with this. This is the same case. We took a, we'll, we'll put up all the case law and everything for you, but we took out all of the other fluff, and we'll provide the case for you so that you can have access. It says that they don't violate the Fourth Amendment by merely asking questions. Huh. So let's find out what they violate. One second. By putting questions to him if the person is willing to listen, or by offering in evidence in a criminal prosecution his voluntary answers to such questions. Nor would the fact that the officer identifies himself as a police officer, without more, convert the approached, however, need not answer any question put to him, indeed, he may decline to listen to the questions at all, and may go on his way. He may not be detained even momentarily without reasonable, 
objective grounds for hold on now that's where they get that objective suspicion articulable suspicion that this is the case they get that from this is terry and this case this is where they get that stupid stuff from so shall we talk for a second let me make sure you guys understand he may not be detained even momentarily without reasonable objective grounds for doing so. So they have to tell you why he's stopping you. State law doesn't matter. Supreme Court has made it quite clear. He does have to tell you. You can get a copy of this. His refusal to listen or answer does not, without more, furnish the grounds for his detention. Now, pay attention. He need not answer any questions. I do not wish to contract with you. I do not wish to participate in your investigation. Indeed, he may decline to listen to the questions at all. La, 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 la. I've done it. Seriously. Not without a missing a beat. Hold on. If there is no detention, no seizure within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment, then no constitutional rights have been infringed. Although not exp No. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't have to be a detention. Hold on. If there's no detention, then there's no seizure. Yes, there is. Even if the detainment is for investigative purposes, even if it's momentary, it's still a violation of law. You don't believe me? Go and look at, no, I almost said Tinsley, but Trazavat versus the city of Tampa Bay. That case explains it all. He was only held for 23 minutes. Momentary. Yeah, violation of his secured rights. One second, y'all. Although not expressly authorized in Terry, United States v. Brignone Ponce, 422 U.S. 873, 422 U.S. 881 minus 882, 1975, was unequivocal in saying that reasonable suspicion of criminal activity warrants a temporary seizure for the purpose of questioning limited to the purpose of the stop. In Brignoni Ponce, that purpose was to verify or dispel the suspicion that the immigration laws were being violated, a governmental interest that was sufficient to warrant temporary detention for limited questioning. Royer does not suggest, nor do we, that a similar rationale would not warrant temporary detention for questioning on less than probable cause where the public interest is. Hold on. Then how can they temporarily detain you if you say, no, I do not wish to participate, no, I do not wish to answer questions? How can they temporarily detain you for questioning once you... Say, no, I don't wish to participate. No, I don't wish to contract. So they cannot detain you. All you do is use this case because Supreme Court, I'll read it back to you again so that you can see. Royer does not suggest, nor do we, that a similar rationale would not warrant temporary detention for questioning on less than probable cause where the public interest involved is the suppression of illegal transactions in drugs or of any other serious crime. Michigan v. Summers, 452 U.S. 692, 1981, involved another circumstance in which a temporary detention on less than probable cause satisfied the ultimate test of reasonableness under the Fourth Amendment. There the occupant of a house was detained while a search warrant for the house was being executed. We held that the warrant made the occupant... Hold on. You can't hold that the warrant made the occupant sufficiently suspect to justify temporary seizure because you didn't have the warrant. Pay attention. This is the Supreme Court talking. This was under William Rehnquist that this bull, I mean, this stuff took place. You must understand this was all violation of law because they cannot hold you while they get a warrant. They cannot hold you and go to the judge. If they're going to get a warrant, then you have a right to be present when they seek that warrant. Hold on now. Let's, let's get y'all back to this case. There the occupant of a house was detained while a search warrant for the house was being executed. We held that the warrant made the occupant sufficiently suspect to justify his temporary seizure. The limited intrusio and on the personal security of the person detained was justified by such substantial law enforcement interests that the seizure could be made on articulable suspicion not amounting to probable cause. Fourth, Terry and its progeny nevertheless created only limited... Now I'm going to stop right there. There's no reason to read all the rest. You guys get a copy that will include the links, which is this section up here. That will include the links. You'll get this underneath the video in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the right to remain silent. You don't have to invoke that right. You don't have to exercise my constitution. You don't have a constitutional right to remain silent. You have an inalienable right to remain silent.
You don't have to say all of that. Say, I don't have to talk to you. I don't have to answer any of your questions. It's my choice. I don't want a contract with you. I don't want to participate in your investigation. Going about your business, son. They ask you another question. Pay attention. You are hereby commanded to cease and desist any further questioning of my person. You are now infringing upon my rights, and you will cease because we are no longer in public, sir. This is a private conversation. You will cease putting my business out in the public. That's all you have to say. Tell them to cease and desist. All right, ladies and gentlemen. There's a song going to come after this. Just a little jingle, a little short jingle. Less than two minutes. But I think you'll get it. Stop saying, I exercise my right to remain silent and just simply tell them, I don't wish to contract with you. Just that simple. I do not wish to participate in your investigation. Just that simple. Articulable suspicion. There is no such thing in the Constitution as articulable suspicion. That's the word they came up with, you ladies and gentlemen. This word does not exist in law. Trust me. There is no such thing in the Fourth Amendment as suspicion. Fourth Amendment says no unreasonable search and seizures. So the Supreme Court says that the search and seizure must be reasonable. Pay attention. But they didn't read the rest of the Constitution. The rest of the Constitution, the Fourth Amendment says, but upon probable cause. Why? Because it says no warrant shall issue. This is talking about warrants, people. This is not talking about arrests. The Supreme Court came up with this stupid structure to violate people's rights, to make it easier for the police and law enforcement. If you don't believe me, when you get a chance, read the rest. When you get a chance, read the rest. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, just you got the right to remain silent. Got to go. You have the right to remain silent. 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 The Supreme Court says that you have to say, Mother, may I? funding this is evidence of a contract as you represent the public trust in your fiduciary if you damage my rights i will hold you personally liable the administrative agency claim to represent holy law you have no jurisdiction over my unalienable rights you have the right to remain silent you have